Hello, Dojo family. It feels so good to connect with you here. Mainly, it feels so good that I feel clear to express my heart and what's come through during this most recent eclipse portal because Lord knows I was lost in the sauce for a for a minute there in amidst an incredible amount of evolutionary catalysts and the confusion that can come when life brings us the invitation to step into a new way of being while at the same time, who it is that we've always been still kind of tugs and anchors us into the old. And that's been my experience during this eclipse portal time, which is the time between the new moon solar eclipse in Scorpio. And then two weeks after that is the full moon lunar eclipse in Taurus. And the two weeks in between two eclipses like that is what we call an eclipse portal. And every person that I've come into contact with during this time has been going through some sort of really intense evolutionary pull. And it's been a powerful thing because here I am in a beautiful home in in Malibu with some of my dearest sisters, and we've been calling it Heartbreak Hotel because everyone is, is moving through their own version of a release of reflections in relationship that are outdated as we step into the newest and truest expression of ourselves and relationships truly are a mirror they're just mirroring what you're willing to claim for yourself what you're willing to settle for what you're saying yes to what you're saying no to and how deeply you're willing to receive your own desires and it can be really scary sometimes to actually receive your own desire Because when you're in relationship with anyone, whether it's a friend, a romantic partner, a business partner, and the relationship itself is not meeting the truth of your desire, and you're willing to bend, contort, compensate for where the other other person in the mix is not meeting you, that is you not receiving your desire. And it's coming from a fear of losing that relationship or whatever the fear looks like for you, right? Fear of being judged, fear of being rejected, fear of love being taken. So often we contort ourselves to try to make something work that is actually not us owning the truth and the extent of our own desires because we're afraid and that's okay. And that's our history speaking in the now, the history, speaking in the now, all the past use, remembering moments where the tools weren't present to meet the sensation of rejection or failure or loss of love. And during this potent time, during this eclipse portal time, I personally have seen a massive opportunity to take that evolutionary leap from the me that has been the one who would settle to the me that I'm fully owning, that I'm claiming and stepping into. And that is in essence, owning my own desires. And when we own our desires, actually own them, actually receive them within ourselves through and through without compromise, it will illuminate where in your external relationship field, those desires are not being met. And that can feel scary that because this is this is why so often we compromise our desires because if we were to actually receive them we would have to face off with those edges we would have to be willing to let go of what is not meeting our desire so here <laughs> during this you know 10 day stint in this beautiful sister home heartbreak hotel where we've come in with a beautiful intention to hold ourselves hold each other and really ritualize this period of time to illuminate through the mirror of sisterhood, who it is that we've been, where we've been settling for too little in the past, how we can hold ourselves and each other in the deepest way, in the deepest places of grief, in an unwavering space of unconditional love and allow those waves to move and also stand for our own and each other's greatness truly. And this was not like a planned thing that happened. I just happened to be here during a huge part of this eclipse portal. And it's the way that life continues to affirm the perfection of her timing. 
And so today, what I'd love to do is share with all of you a lot of my own learnings during this eclipse portal that feel ripe, that feel ready, that feel um, they're actually quite recent, that I'm I'm still in the process of fully uh, receiving that like I can really know that what has shifted inside of me is not going anywhere. It's like that new where I'm like a few days into it and it feels the clarity came in so sharp and strong that it feels ripe to share what has come through. And also I want to name that when we receive these new levels of embodiment, which means something you've been op- working on at the level of concept, right? Like I, I deserve to receive my value. I am worthy. Like we talk and use language. And often we try to like ingrain into our awareness, into our consciousness, these ideas and ideals and values, but it's only landing at the level of like concept and idea. And here I'm talking about what occurs when it actually sinks all the way into the system and there's suddenly this shift that it can seem subtle but it's massive because all of a sudden that which has been occurring on a conceptual level and you've been like trying to like get it into your system just lands it just lands and that is what i have experienced over the past couple of days and i want to describe what that arc has looked like for me and my intention is that my description of what is occurring in my own reality will in- inspire incite and invite um evolution and um new awareness and relatability in your own life experience so You know, this eclipse period of time has been really potent and really intense, and we're going to be integrating from it for a minute. So when, by the time this episode is released, the new moon in Scorpio eclipse and the full moon in Taurus eclipse will be a week or two behind us, but the learnings that came through during that portal will be just beginning to be integrated well, right? So before we begin... I'd love for you to presence yourself here in the space and exhale the air all the way out. We're going to take a deep breath, exhale, and inhale all the way to the bottom of the belly. And exhale, and just allowing yourself to arrive, arrive fully here into the space, into the deepest space of receiving that you can access for yourself at this time. Today, the headline of my learnings comes with simply this, the service of our shadows, the ways our shadows serve as the most profound evolutionary impulse. It's like if you sit down in an easy chair And it's so comfy and yummy. It's like very unlikely that you're going to get up and move. But if you sit down in that easy chair and you sit on a thumbtack, vision that immediately you're going to sit down and go and get right up. This is the evolutionary impulse of our triggers, the triggers that are connected, that bring out our shadows, our shadow patterning. The awareness that we're able to wrap around our shadow patterning, when you have the capacity to become aware of yourself while you're in the expression of any one of your shadow patterns, no matter how uncomfortable it is, no matter how much we want to judge ourselves for being in the shadow, that shadow pattern again, it becomes the key to your freedom And after this Scorpio eclipse during Scorpio season, we have been given, granted the gift of access to our shadow patterns. And the access point to those shadow patterns is often triggering experiences and relationships and situations and and losses that bring out our shadow aspects the shadows that want to protect, the shadows that want to preserve, the shadows that want to preserve or our fear failure, the shadows that want to hold on. 
right? The shadows that feel anger or express anger in, in a in a reactive way rather than a healthy way. The shadow that wants to close down and isolate. There's so many expressions. And so my question for you is during this time, really how much courage can you apply to the willingness it takes to look clearly and soberly at yourself while you're in the midst of the expression of any one of your shadow aspects? Because the nature of a shadow aspect most often is that it comes through an, un an unconscious pathway. So often while we're in it, we don't actually see that it's happening. So the Jedi trick here in the intention that you can apply to your life is, okay, I'm not going to resist myself when I'm in the expression of my shadows, but I'm actually going to get curious and set the intention to be able to be see, to see myself clearly and recognize the difference between myself when I'm in an empowered expression and when I'm in a shadow, disempowered, protective expression. And the catch is often when we witness ourselves in a shadow, the first thing that happens is we judge ourselves for it. We make ourselves bad or wrong or we implode. And so the next step is of, I, my intention is to become aware of myself while I'm in a shadow aspect relative to any trigger in my life because I know that it's coming in for me to see this piece. And my commitment is that I will not be hard on myself for it. My commitment is to let go of self-judgment. My commitment is to bring compassion into my heart whenever I catch my adorable self in any protective shadow pattern. And it is that environment that will allow and become conducive for the evolution to occur. Now, during this really potent evolutionary time, the eclipses bring forth this like quantum portal, right? The nature of an eclipse is that the earth, the moon, and the sun are on the same ecliptic. They're on the same plane. So there's like a, a it's a level. The energy has a straight shot between all of them. So whether it's a new moon or a full moon, the full moon is the sun is on one side of the earth and the moon is on the other. The new moon is when the sun and the moon are both on one side of the earth. Either way, in an eclipse, they're essentially level with the earth. So the potency of the energy is enhanced exponentially. And if you imagine like hopping through a portal, that's the most slippery, easeful, lubricated portal to jump through. And so life will tend to organize itself relative to your own highest self invitation in ways that specifically invite you to portal hop which means from my perspective to journey from the outdated, in protection, unconscious, reactive, in control version of yourself in the conditioned patterning version of you to quantum leap from that you to the you that is living into an entirely new way of being. Now I feel for myself I actually got to experience a shift in my being that allowed me to see my own desires move from conceptual to an embodied awareness. And that sounds almost like a subtlety, but it is huge. It's huge. In this eclipse time, it's like, you go into that, that tug and pull between yourself where the shadows are serving because they're bringing up the awareness of like, wow, here's the tug backwards. We could call it backwards, right? The tug back into that, which is familiar yet outdated relative to the trigger in your life. And then there's the pull at the same time, the evolutionary pull, the evolutionary impulse towards that, which is new that which is liberated, that which is a free expression of your soul. And yet that which is new and liberated and free can feel really uncomfortable, really uncomfortable. And often we can lay our eyes on where we're going. So I'll use an example. So for myself during this, this period of time of this intensity, I noticed an invitation arise in my life relative to relationship where I was given an opportunity to engage in a relationship dynamic 
that felt like a tasty treat that felt like it would be it would feel good and it would feel feel exciting in a way and yet it was not meeting me in the fullness of my desire of what I really want and the me that knows what I'm worthy of and what I really deserve and what I'm truly creating for myself would fully claim and so in the face of this invitation I saw my shadow patterning come up and it initially comes up and you don't even see it because it's so natural. And the shadow pattern comes up for me in in many ways. One way is this tendency to like overcompensate with my enormous amount of willingness to do whatever it takes to make almost any relationship work. And that overcompensation and over willingness will sort of fill in the gap where another person in my life may be unwilling, right? Where they're not fully leaning in or they're they're not meeting me to the degree that I really want. And so the pattern for me is that I learned to overcompensate and, and ignore what it is that I really need in certain areas in order to settle for good enough so that I don't lose love. And so I got to see that really come up. I got to see it come up. And then... I got to witness myself become aware of, wow, wow, I see myself in this shadow. The This particular opportunity to connect in this relationship dynamic feels really compelling and exciting for this part, this older part of myself, this outdated part of myself. And yet in order to do it, I would have to sacrifice what I really need the truth of what I really need. And so I arrived at a place where I set a boundary. And so this is, again, the tug and the pull. There was the pull and then the tug was strong enough. The future now me was calling me forward enough. I could see the aim enough to know that at this stage in my journey, settling for less than the fullness of that which I really, really desire will not work for me. And so I set this boundary. And now... Then I got to learn the difference between setting a boundary and holding a boundary, setting a boundary and holding a boundary. And so after setting the boundary, I noticed a part of myself come up that wanted to compromise, that wanted to like go into the story of if only I could call this person forward into the recognition of this, you know, the strength of this connection and that it deserves more energy. It deserves more of X, Y, or Z, or, you know, let's find a a certain harmony point. And this energy of like really wanting to be the driving force that finds a third way (laughs) against my own clear boundary that I set. And I just saw myself go into this spin. And that was tough. That was tough because it really felt like a battle inside of myself. And I could see that it was connected to a a way of being that I learned in my upbringing and relative to familial dynamics and learning how to bend and contort and like always find a third way, even if it means I have to kind of yield or bend over backwards. And part of that yielding and bend overing backwards is comes from a root of not fully owning my worth, not fully owning my value. And so at root, I got to see where I, in the wobble, it's like I set the boundary, I jumped into the pull of the evolutionary aim, and then the wobble happened. And the wobble was coming from not being on a foundation of a solid foundation of self-worth and value and really knowing who it is that I am, what it is that I deserve and standing for nothing less, truly. Truly, not as an effortful, forceful thing. There's a difference between like, you know, an inauthentic force of I deserve more, you know, and just an embodied knowing of like, you know what? I actually deserve to receive my value. I deserve to be met and just owning that. So I got to see where the root of this wobble on my boundary came from and meet it with awareness meet it with awareness. And then the next step is, this is kind of my own journey through the steps I shared earlier. 
Then there was an invitation to compassion. After seeing myself in this, in this wobble and where I wasn't fully owning my worth, you know, I got to really move into compassion and be like, you know what, Zahara, it is all good, girl. Like it's, it's all good. This is a part of the process. This is part of the journey. This is part of what you're learning to fully embody and own at this time. And there's no amount of external validation of external, um, affirmation that is going to give me this piece of the puzzle. It's got to come from the core of my being. Do you feel the eclipse, the potency in that? It's got to come from the core of my being. We talk about that so much in the spiritual community, how how important it is to self-source. And what does that actually mean? So when you discover yourself in a shadow expression, you become aware of it and you see that aspect expressing itself and what would that aspect do? And then you find what's underneath it. Like, why? Why would I waver on my boundary? Why would I try to hold on to what was or what could be, why would I try to force something here? Why would I settle for less than I really, really desire? And you see what's underneath it. For me, it was like, wow, I, it's, it's, I'm not owning my worth. So what is it for you? What's underneath the expression of these shadows for you? Where's the misbelief that you bought into along the way? Getting curious is so central here. So then I saw it. I was like, wow, the value piece, the self-worth piece. And again, nobody can give that to me. No partner, no body, no one. So this is where we start the journey from moving from concept into embodiment. So I could see, wow, the piece here is actually self-respect. It's owning a boundary and trusting myself enough to stand behind it, to have my own back. It's so wild with me because there's literally that physical manifestation of my backbone being curved. I've shared that in several episodes. So there's a journey of having my own back, of having a backbone, of not coming off my center, standing my ground, standing for what it is that I desire, what it is that I deserve, how it is that I see clearly and trusting myself in that. And so many humans reflect to me the potency of my clear seeing for them. And so I got to see a block around my own clear seeing for me. And how much am I believing my own clear seeing within for myself? And so I sat with that and I was, I was noticing myself like, you know, sharing a piece with a trusted, a trusted friend and, and sharing about, you know, I, how I, I get to own my worth more and I get to own my value more. And it was like just words, you know, like I'm speaking the words and there's almost an effort behind it to like, try to get it in and try to get it to land. And I just want to say that part of any process on the road towards embodying a new truth that you're cultivating inside of yourself is totally cool. It's totally natural. It's okay if it takes a a moment, a month, or years for that which you're receiving within yourself to land, to like fully drop. It's going to take however long it takes. And this is part of the evolutionary process. Now, the turning point for me did happen literally hours before the eclipse portal portal ended hours before the Taurus full moon, there was a quant, there was a massive shift in my being where this knowing of my own worth relative to relationship, my value system and what I'm a yes to like dropped into my like womb space. It was a fully, it was a massive shift. Now, did that shift happen in a moment, like a magic moment Or did that shift happen relative to years of working on this piece, years of 
catalysts and triggers and moments, micro moments and relational dynamics that called me forward again and again and again. And until I arrived into this moment that seemed to occur, like this was the magic moment or was it a culmination of them all? And I would say it's both. There was a moment that occurred very unexpectedly and magically and really supported me in this piece of knowing around my own worth and value dropping in. And it's relative to months and years of saying yes to my evolution in the most uncomfortable moments of spin and going against myself. And saying no when I really mean yes. And saying yes when I really mean no. And learning the difference. And reaching when I know that I need to reach for myself. And crying tears at night because I feel like I've abandoned myself somehow. And actually feeling the pain of self-abandonment enough that I got so close to the edge of it again that I could feel and become aware of myself in the shadow pattern. Oh, wow. This is the one who wants to self-abandon even just a little because she's believing that it will preserve love. When it's actually a self-abandonment is losing love because all the love that we receive in relationship from those closest to us is only being experienced through the truth of our own being. You are the generator of all the love that you feel in your life. I did a practice the other day amidst this journey and I embodied this extraordinary celebratory like dragon energy and it was this incredible embodiment practice and I felt these very high states of pleasure and bliss and humor and it was like right out of a a time where I was actually feeling grief. I moved from grief to this incredible space of pleasure and ecstasy and then I came back into the moment and I was like, wow. That cosmic explosion of pleasure and love is not connected to or or coming from anyone else outside of me. I am the generator and the access point of that much bliss, of that much pleasure, of that much love. And if I choose to engage with another being and share that with them, that is my choice. And it might inspire more of that to flow through them and vice versa. But if it flows through them, it is coming from their direct source. And so there's empowerment in that. And there's empowerment in the patience and gentleness required to allow for however much time, however much space, however much process, however many triggers and catalysts and moments you require in order to witness yourself in a particular shadow pattern. From my perspective, making it okay to not be okay for a moment is the best lubrication for your growth. (laughs) It is, and it is the lubrication for sure leads to the pleasure of the breakthrough. Of course, that's the aim. So let's lead ourselves to the pleasure of our next breakthrough by lubricating wherever we're at, however, wherever we are in our process with a lot of patience, compassion, and love and the practice of finding the internal generator of emotional states within ourselves so that we can actually start to believe that we deserve the next level of life that we're calling in for ourselves. Where are you not believing that you deserve it? Where have you, where have you, where are you not believing you deserve it? And then when you identify that zone, I want to say that it's okay to feel for a while that you're operating at the level of concept. I, you know, a lot of the women I work with come to me and say, you know, Zahara, like I can see where this story lives. And I, I know that I deserve more than this, but I just can't seem to stop settling for less than that. I just can't seem to pop out of this level of um, financial exchange in my life. And I want to say at first, it's like, okay, all right main event is looking at it and being patient with the you because the you that deserves the next level of life 
is the you that knows you deserve a lot of compassion too. Anyone who's happy, truly happy at the next level of liberated life that you've got your eye on, I guarantee you they've learned how to be easy on themselves on the hard days. They've learned how to be easy on themselves in, in, the, in the moments when it's the most challenging. So my question is, how can we add a heavy dose of ease, period, in terms of how you're relating to yourself when it's hard? This does not mean say no to that which is hard. These big gateways where you're being invited to become the next iteration of you are inherently challenging. And yet within the challenge, can you cultivate the willpower to notice when you're being hard on yourself for not getting the gold medal in the moment? So this eclipse portal for me has been massively healing as I've received after months and years and many catalysts and triggers of noticing myself in the shadow pattern of settling for less than I deserve in relationship and trying and efforting and trying to make it work and giving it everything I have and into all of the sudden this shift and recognition that the simplicity of me owning my value and just when I say owning my value, I mean literally me just valuing what it is that I want and only saying yes to that which is a, is, is a match to that or at minimum wants to be a match to that. So tune into your life where sometimes there's expressions that come in as tests that are literally reflecting to you that which is almost and it's really hard and scary to say, it can feel hard and scary to say no to that which is almost because you don't want to believe that it won't change. When something that's almost exactly what you want comes in, it's easy to slip into, well, maybe it'll shift or if only I show up like this, then maybe this reflection will change or maybe they'll meet me in a new way and we just, we miss what is. We miss what is. And when we let go of the idea that we have to shift or change or contort or settle in any way in order for the reflections of relationship in our lives to meet us, and I'm not saying every relationship needs to be perfect, but I am saying that every relationship in my life moving forward needs to either be a match to that which I really value and require for myself or needs to be an individual who is willing to, to go in that direction, who is willing to look at their own shadow aspects and do the work required for themselves to move in a direction that is an agreed upon shared reality of harmony. In that reality, however long it takes to meet in the harmony, as long as there's mutual self-responsibility and mutual willingness to go there, I'm a yes to that. So this is important to name. We're not creating a reality of perfection for all those in our life. Lord knows I am not perfect and I am always still growing. I'm growing. I'm growing. And part of what I value for myself are individuals in my own life who have the same level of patience in their own value system that, listen, I want you to be in my life, Zahara, as long as you're in alignment with that which is most important to me, or you want to be in alignment with that which is most important to me. And if you slip into a moment of fear or lack or doubt or spiral of any sort, I trust you and hold you as able to do your work and come home again and again and again. Do you feel that's a mirror of the compassion that I spent so much time on earlier in this episode? When you give yourself the compassion that will lubricate your evolutionary process, truly, and you can't fake it, you will be met with individuals in your life who also gift you with the compassion that is required for to lubricate your evolutionary journey which means they don't need you to get over it faster than you are. They don't need you to not feel. They don't need you to be anywhere other than where you are in order to be 
part of their lives. They actually hold you as able and stand for your greatness and see you in your highest and are patient with you in your process because you are in a shared reality where the aim is the same. That's relationship in its highest order from my perspective. And for me, this eclipse portal was an initiation into the next level of relationship with myself, with life, with the, the beloved in all of its forms that it shows up in my life. And I really trust that the embodiment that I feel in my system, which is this like effortless knowing, it almost, it shifted from the, the pull of a part of me that would justify you know, someone else's lack of willingness to meet me and overcompensate with my own willingness, it shifted from that being like a part of me could actually justify that to all of a sudden a total new level of, wow, I I can't even engage that energy all of a sudden. I, I can't even sl- like dr- drop, feel it in the same way right now. It's a wild shift that occurred. This eclipse portal was this like shift into a knowing and into a deeper level of self-respect within myself that makes it very clear in my external reality that which is reflecting respect and care and love to the degree that I require in my life and that which is not. And it doesn't make that which is not bad or wrong. It really doesn't. It just makes it a no for me. It can be simple. It doesn't have to be this whole complex matrix of like trying to figure it out. It really shifted into the simplicity. And that's the move from Scorpio to Taurus to the Taurus where the North node of the moon is transiting right now for all of us. Taurus is about simplicity. Taurus is about not only setting boundaries, but having the amount of self-worth and value that is required in order to hold them, in order to hold them, in order to keep your shape. Taurus is the first of the earth signs about form. So what form do you want to create in your life? The North node is the dharmic evolutionary invitation collectively for me in my natal chart. I have my North node in Taurus, but for us as a collective, the North node is transiting through Taurus right now. So we're all making a careful study of Taurus. So what do you require in order to keep your shape, the shape of the you that is valuing yourself, that knows your worth that is standing in self-respect. And that is the shape from which you create the form of your life. This is the invitation. And I feel myself with so much gratitude, finally holding the shape of a woman that I trust to create form in any way, whether it's home, family, relationship, service, that comes from an unwavering sense of of self-worth, of self-respect. And I pray that whatever I'm sharing here today inspires the same in you and that what you're moving through right now, your own version of it, as you receive more of yourself, that it may inspire the same in all those around you in this ripple effect that is occurring during this massively evolutionary time ripples out into the hearts of all those who are receptive spaces on the planet at this time. So many of us are waking up to the next level of our being And that requires a cracking open, a shedding of that which used to keep us safe. And when that shell cracks open, man, it can feel really raw. It can feel really vulnerable. But from my perspective, that is the sweetest spot to create from. That is the space that we feel each other the most. I hope you all feel me today. And I'm tuning into each one of your hearts. 
so grateful for your listening. And I look forward to hearing from all of you. If this episode touched your hearts, please leave a rating, a review on iTunes. It really supports these transmissions, getting out and touching more lives all around the world. And I'm so grateful for your presence and listening. I look forward to seeing you all next time.